Hi everyone, Rob from the Aquaponics Source here again to show you a quick walkthrough of a farm that we just finished building. We are here in Reading, Pennsylvania at Tom Masano Auto Group. Um, they have a huge facility here um, and they decided to devote a uh, small portion of it to an uh, aquaponic pilot project that we're doing here uh, as an indoor grow. So we want to just give you a quick walkthrough of what we've done today um, and you know, show you uh, some of our equipment that we installed. So the first thing to talk about is the room itself, you know, dealing with an indoor grow compared to a greenhouse, there's a lot of things to consider. So uh, HVAC, uh, systems, air conditioning, dehumidification, all of that was specified and installed in here along with fans for ventilation. Um, beyond that, as you'll notice, we have a ton of grow lights. You know, we don't have access to the sun, and what comes in through the windows isn't enough. So these are uh, Thrive Apex lights. Uh, and we have them set up throughout the room um, to provide optimal coverage for our plants. And so we have slightly different lighting setups depending on what we're growing. Um, but let me just kind of give you a quick walkthrough of some of the aquaponic system equipment and uh, yeah, take it from there. So right here, these are our Growasis four-tier nursery and microgreen systems. Um, this is where the plants start their lives. So we basically put in seedling trays into here and they sprout and grow. Um, each one is a capacity for over 2,000 seedlings, so you're looking at about 4,100 plants between the two of them. So obviously more than what this little system needs for their harvest rotations, um, but gives you a lot of extra space for microgreens, you can start uh, crops for outdoor production, you know, whatever you want to do, you have the capacity to do it here. Um, we'll also talk about our media beds. So these are our Aqua Abundance media beds, although we customize them a little bit, we slam them down to the floor as low as we can go, and what that did is uh, gave us more ceiling room. You know, we're not in a greenhouse with really high ceilings, we're limited by the height. So in order to uh, grow the largest plants possible, we drop the bed below, uh, and these lights are on adjustable risers, so the lights can go up and down depending on the height of the plant. So lots of room here, and again, this is where we're gonna grow fruiting crops. Think of your tomatoes, peppers, cucumbers, everything like that. Now, over on this side, This is our Growasis elevated transplanting system. It's two feet wide and 16 feet long. And this is where our uh, seedlings go after the nursery. So basically they spend two weeks in the nursery. After that they come out and they grow another two weeks in this system. With these, we have these really great transplanting boards. Uh, so 162 holes per, per board. And so we actually put the plants in here. Uh, we give them more space than in the nursery trays but still pretty tightly packed together. It allows us to get a ton of production in a very small area before going out to our main racks. Now, over here, we also have grow lights uh, on our light rack system built into our frame. Um, these are Thrive Infinity lights. Um, you know, really good full spectrum light, two rows of them for really nice even coverage over our plants. So, seedlings come out of here and then into our main grow out. These grow out DWCs are eight feet wide, 20 feet long. These are Growasis Elevated. Um, and we're using our main production rack boards here. So 20 holes per board, two by four, which is three and a half plants per square foot if you're counting. And so what that does is it gives the plants a really nice amount of space to grow, but still we're packing in a ton of production in a very small area. Now underneath here, again, this is just floating on water. Uh, we have air going throughout the whole trough, so the roots are getting highly oxygenated, and we're constantly pumping in water from our aquaculture system, so all those nutrients from our fish are coming in here and growing our plants for us. Um, so that's just about it for our plant room here, uh, and then we'll go through and walk through the fish system. As I said, this farm 
is in a huge warehouse here, part of the uh, Tomasano Auto Group. So let's go in, let's talk a little bit more about our uh, aquaculture system. So we're here in our aquaculture room. The first thing to point out, obviously, are the amazing SpongeBob paintings on the wall. You have to keep your fish entertained. You never forget about that. It's a central part of fish health. Now, this system here, we're planting our growing koi. We're not worried about harvesting fish, so we're doing um, very nice, high-quality koi. Uh, they're going to be very happy for a long period of time in the system. When they get big enough, they're going to be moved out to another koi pond on site. Um, so this system here is a modified version of our Flourish Fish Farm 600. The only thing we did was we added a 500 gallon tank and a 300 gallon tank. So call it our Flourish Fish Farm 800. Uh, we've got windows in the tank so you can observe your fish. Look for uh, fish health, make sure they're nice and healthy and happy. Uh, we have plenty of aeration in there. Uh, individual water inlet controls so you can control really fine-tune the flow rates of this tank. Uh, working our way down, once again, we have our uh, AST Endurance 4000 bead filter. This is the heart of our system, is doing all of our mechanical filtration, removing fish waste from the water. It's also doing our biological filtration, so all of our beneficial nitrifying bacteria are here in this filter converting ammonia from our fish into nitrates for our plants. Working our way over a bit more, we have our dual sump set up so we can operate as a coupled or decoupled farm. So we can isolate our, our fish system completely from our plants, so run as a standalone aquaculture system. Our filter gear is doing all of the life support required, nothing else needed. And our plant system in the other room is running as a purely hydroponic system. Now, when the fish are big enough and producing all the nutrients we need, we can turn a couple of valves here, and the water is shared between the two systems. Um, we've got a nice passageway, and so actually the pipes are going through the wall into the other room, out of sight, you can't see. Now, this farm is a zero waste farm. No water ever goes down the drain. When the filter produces sludge on a daily basis. We take that in a bucket and we dump it here. This is our aerobic mineralization tank and we have a ton of oxygen churning our fish waste. We're growing heterotrophic bacteria and that's breaking down the solids in that fish waste and releasing nutrients that would have otherwise been lost. Now periodically, we shut the air off, let the solids in the tank settle to the bottom and we skim off the clean, clear water called super baby. And that goes into our plant sump right here, where our pump takes that and distributes it out to our hydroponic system. So, constant use of our fish waste, nothing goes down the drain. Uh, of course, we've got some monitoring systems for both of our fish system and plant system, keeping track of pH, temperature, conductivity. This system is also going to be equipped with battery backup air pumps. So if the power ever goes out, we'll have about 8 to 12 hours of battery life running the air, keeping our fish alive. Along with that, with um, auto divers uh, and alarm systems. So if the power goes out, the operators of the farm will be notified and they can come in and take care of things. Um, so that's just about it. Thanks for taking a look at the system. Again, we're at Tomasano Auto Group in Reading, Pennsylvania. Guarantee it, the coolest car dealership in the world. Try to find another aquaponic system like this out there. Thanks, everyone.